Oh, hello, and thank you very much for joining me again in the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life. So, um, I'm just putting some paint onto my palette, um, and I got a few questions today again that got to be answered. So, let's have a quick introduction and then let's get on to the painting that I'm doing. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't so as you can see, I've got a few um, different colours um, uh, currently on the palette. I've got some Hooker's Green, i got some Cardinum Yellow, some Prussian Blue, some Mars Black, some Burnt Umber and some White. I think that's what I'm going to be using today, but I'm not too sure. Now, if you look at the canvas, you can see that um, I did a little bit of work the other week on a video um, when I was answering some questions. I'll put that in the eye cards for you. But as you can see, the, the painting has developed a little bit more since then. So, um, yeah, I, I finished doing the ivy, uh, which looks quite nice. I put a little bit of shrubbery there, some flowers, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. I want to work a little bit more on these trees today. And I want to work on this grass section, really, and possibly... Um, this is going to be a road with a couple of puddles because it doesn't it doesn't long rain because it rains a lot in Wales. It rains it's raining out there today actually. It really is. So um, yeah, I thought that we'll just get straight on to that. So um, I'm just grabbing a little bit of kitchen roll. So I I need to increase the 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 green there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of. Hooker's green. I'm just going to get my little pot. I'm just going to put a bit of water in there. Yeah, so there's a lot of questions um, that I answered um, the other week, um, which I'm going to do again today. I'm going to add a little bit of black. I don't like using black too much in the painting because it's not something I like to do. Um, but I'm going to, I just want to darken that green up a bit, take the excess off my brush. I want to put some shadows coming in. Just under there, just like that. Just brushing it in very, very gently. There we go. I don't want too much detail in this painting. I wanted, I wanted to look. I don't know. I got this particular. Um, I got this particular look in my in my mind. What I wanted to look like. I want to put a little bit of shadow because there's a lot of trees there. I want a bit of, bit of shadow coming through. I'm going to put a bit of shadow onto that road as well. I'm just going to develop a little bit of yellow. There we go. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And just play. If, if you haven't got the colour that you want, then just play with a few tones and things you know just play with that and things will slowly develop I'm going to touch a little touch of white just a small touch of white to that this is it little pockets of light sprinkling in there that man not too much back into that darker colour and I'm just going to darken up an area just like that like as if there's a lot of shadow we can we can put some different types of effect in there but you can see there's like little bits of shadow coming through just blend it all together just like that hey. it'll work out for the best it's just a matter of putting different layers in. Okay, so let's get my phone and let's have a look at the, the first question we've got today. As I said, it's raining quite heavily out there today. Um, okay, we need to find a question. I got a mirror somewhere. There we go. Um, the first one is um, from MLD Gray. And how do I paint purple fur? 
So if you have a look at one of my, um, well, something just clicked. Is it my camera just clicked? Something just clicked. I'm having problems with my cameras, but um, yeah. So if you have a look at one of my fur tutorials, you'll see that it's just a matter of putting lighter tones on top of darker tones. It's basically like doing a tree, but you're painting fur instead. So what I'm trying to say is, if we get a little brush, um, one of my brushes, I want to, I want, um, let me think. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to use this brush. This is one of my foliage brushes. It's gone quite hard there purposely, um, and I've just left at the end very mal malleable. <laughs> so let's get some, let's get some hookers green and some yellow. So when you when you paint when you paint in any type of fur, you, you I always start um, I always start with the darkest tones first, and then I build up to the lightest tones, basically like a tree. So you can see the 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 dark tones there, and then you you just slowly increase you just slowly increase the lighter tones into the painting. It's the same with fur, but instead of doing branches and things like this, all you're doing is doing very 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 thin lines now you can use things like a rake brush um this is a rake brush i don't know if you can see um it's got several well there's about a dozen or so very thin hairs on the on the front of that and then you go you just do individual hairs like this or you can use a very small thin script lining brush again that'll actually bring in with very very fine lines you can't do fur quickly but you can do fur realistically and that's the thing so yeah this is basically like painting a tree so anything like that just follow the same type of principles it's just you put your dark tones on first and whatever color you want to paint uh, in this instance you want you wanted a purpley um a purple fur and just use different tones and different tones of purple and just build it up as I'm doing with these trees there like that so let's get a little bit more yellow I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight in with a little bit of yellow now to see how bright this is actually going to make my trees because I want to put a bit of highlights on a few of these leaves and I'm not gonna try and not to overdo with that but just a little bit of highlight just to pick up like a few leaves on the trees are just glint in there like that and you can see same type of principle dark to light or light to dark or dark to light I go from dark to light there we go And the key is not really to overdo it too much. So I just get a bit of light. Just to catch these leaves that there, there you go. So we've got a we got a nice bright area there. You can always use this method as well if you want to put some grass in. like that in fact let's let's do that I'll get myself a little bit of kitchen roll. I want to just put a little bit of texture in over here so let's let's just put a bit of grass texture just like that that could be your little light spots that that are coming through on a lot get some darker there yes, is well. don't want a lot of texture but just enough just to show that little bit of glitter light coming through 
It's just those little tiny things that can make a big difference. Okay, so let's have a look at the next question we got here today. All my keys poke out and I don't they don't fit properly. Any tips? Um Mr. Dwaywood. So the keys what we're we talking about well we actually talked about this, didn't we, the other the other week. Um we'll be talking about keys here. So yeah, on the on, on the cheapy type of canvases, uh, sometimes these keys don't fit properly. They 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 they're too small for the gaps they made. And when you knock them in, they actually poke through um the edge of your canvas there and cause you major problems and you'd split your canvas. So in that fact, if they don't fit, don't use them. Don't worry too much about it. And as we mentioned, these staples on each corner, um, if your keys are not gonna fit in there and you don't want the stretchy canvas, just leave those uh, those um, staples in place and that'll maintain that stretch that they manufactured. So um, that, that's easy question answered. Um, another question we got. Um, another question from um, from um, Debbie Morris. Um, can the cardboard be sprayed with a sealer first to prevent quick absorption? Okay, so when we paint in, um, when we paint on, I paint on mount board. There you go. So paint on mount board. Um, yes, you could seal it um, if you've got a sealer. Um, you could put a very thin coat of um, a PVA adhesive. Uh, mod podge or something like that mixed with some water make it like um don't make it too wet but you could you could put a mod podge or something on that just to seal the surface to to, to stop the absorption absorption rate of the, the paint if you wanted to or uh, you could use a little bit of medium anything like this a matte medium or gloss medium you could glaze that card like that if you wanted to um or you could paint it with gesso and then put a glaze on it. It depends what type of surface you want. But yes, everything is possible with cardboard. In fact, we'll try that one day. We'll put a, a coat of gesso on and then we'll put a glaze of gloss medium, which will make the surface quite shiny, in fact. And your paint will slip around and you won't soak in so much. So we've got to be aware of um, possible paint flaking and stuff like that. That's where it takes the the um, the ability of the paint to soak into the cardboard away from what you're doing. Um, so the cardboard becomes less effective, less absorbent. absorbent. Um, it doesn't soak the paint in, so the paint is going to float across the surface. So we've got to be careful. We've got to treat that very much like canvas. And there's a possibility we might even have to varnish it as well. So, yeah, this is just all information off the top of my head. And... Um, yeah, basically, the, the things that, that I have learned over the years and um, to try to make my life a bit easier. So we're going back to this now. You can see that's dried off quite nicely as I was talking to you. So what we need to do now is just get a little bit more detail in there. Just a little bit. A little bit of light sparkling through. Just catching the light like that. Now, when this dries, if that area is a little bit bright, then we could put a glaze of color over that. But you can see the way the paint is starting to dry. That's not looking as bright now. So be aware that acrylic paint dries and it dries matte and it, it dulls back as well. So when you put a color on that looks very bright, don't adjust it really until you see it drying. And if you think it's a little bit bright then we can put a wash of green over that because this painting is going to be varnished anyway and again in that corner you can see it was quite bright earlier but it's it's it's, it's gone quite a dull color now so again we're going to work now on these bushes i'm going to put in some brighter type of foliage on them and whatever way you decide you want to paint 
then that's fine. Don't think that you can't do certain things. In s if, 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 if it work, what I'm trying to say is basically, if it works for you, then it works. And you'll see that if you if you watch this as I'm talking, now it'll dry back. And you'll get a little bit darker. There's a little bit of shadow in there. We'll just put a little few flecks, just of green, just a very very. T I'm, I'm hardly touching the canvas with my brush, just getting that effect. Just like that because i want to work on this road on another lesson um and i haven't quite decided how to redo well not redo but how to get this um this roof and that to look a little bit better now you notice i put a red door in there now there's a reason the red door is in there because red works really well in a painting because you've got red and green to complement so that's complementing all the greens and stuff a little bit of red a couple of spots of red there where the flowers are again um, is a very very effective very 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 effective color um, and we can put a little bit of we can put a little bit of green in just over the top of that now just to knock that brightness there away there we are a little brightness of orange that we uh, I did I didn't quite like that again with with this area let me show you very quickly uh, if I get a very soft brush if I wanted to darken that that up a bit I just thin my paint down get a very very thin washy paint and I'll just go over that area just like that and what it's going to do the lighter areas of paint will take on the glaze of color so it's just going to knock that it's going to knock that back at just a touch just like that i just noticed something i need to put a bit a bit of darker foliage there there we are now i've done some detail in the windows as well you don't need to do much more than that really you just need to show that their windows okay so yes yeah, coming on quite nice you can see that area has already started to darken up again um, um all i'm trying to do is 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 push that back a little bit bring this forward but your focal point when you're looking at this painting your eye is going to go straight to that door and then it's going to work around like this so i need to push that back a bit the only way i can push that back a bit is brighten this a little bit there so there we are it's balancing right Jacqueline says, um, what is the actual amount of water to popoline glycol uh, to gloss medium? So on, on, a, on a previous video, I said that you could mix this particular product. There you go. This particular product. Um, I'll put it under this camera. There we are. So we got, we got popoline glycol. Now we need to mix that with some glazing medium. So... Um, Based, it isn't the formula, Jacqueline. To be honest with you, I I don't I don't um, I don't use formulas as such. Now, if I was going to mix a little bit of that, let's just use this old pot by there. I'll put a little bit of this glazing medium in. I'll have a look at that. There we are. I'm going to add a bit of water to that. I don't want to go too thin. Um, I want to try and keep it to less than. 45 percent if i can so we've got a nice glaze now that that already now has become a glaze and as i mentioned earlier on the cardboard you could actually use that if you wanted to you could paint that directly onto the card like that and that on its own is going to seal that card in place when that's dry there we are well, now just let that dry so you could do that and if you're going to use this for a uh, painting you want to slow down all poplin glycol does it actually slows down the drying time of your paint it acts as a retarder um now there are i think i've got um let me have a look if there's one in this drawer here we are we got i got one of these things this is called a pipette this is a pipette this does small amounts of drops basically small drops so I'll, what i'll do well i'll get some of this poplin glycol like that 
and I'll fill up my pipette. There you go. So I'll put about, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about drops, ten drops of that with the pipette. Um, and that, to me, will be enough to be able to thin that down. You can see there's a little bit of muck coming up out of the bottom of that pot because it wasn't a clean pot. But um, that, again, will slow that down from drying now. So if I add that, if I add that to my paint, if I add that to my paint, there we go, just like that, instead of water. So I've got a bit of glazing medium, a bit of poplin glycol, I add that to water, and that's going to retard, that is going to retard my paint, like a retarder. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this paint now. I'm going to put it there. There we are. So that's going to that's going to slow down the drying time of that particular paint. There we go. Works really well for acrylic, and because it's got a glaze in it as well, um, you can use um, 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 a, pol um, a PVA glue or Mod Podge instead of the gloss medium if you wanted to. But yeah, very good product. Very good product. Um, do, 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 do. Is is it food or pharmacy grade? Well, this is um, this is actually, f I think this is food grade as well. This particular one. Um, they do use this in food. Uh, they do use it in food. They use it in um, vaping fluids. It's very safe. Um, I I believe this food grade. Um, it doesn't say actually say on there, but I I can't I can't confirm it with that particular one. But you can get food grade uh, ones. And Kathy Hart, um, I'm uh, I am actually able to follow your YouTube um, tutorials. You're a good teacher. If I follow a tutorial from you and it turns out okay, and I have friends asking to pay me for them, is it permitted? Thank you. You're so much fun and, and enjoyable to watch. Okay, Kathy. Now, the most po most important thing is that a lot of stuff these days is copywritten um, and it's got copyright on it. Photographs, artwork, anything like that at all. Now, a lot of my reference materials comes from royalty-free sites. Uh, that's not to say that I don't pay for the service, which I do. Because the, the, the sites I actually go on to, I purchase a, a, a right to use, but they are still loyalty um, free. However, saying that, as soon as my brush touches the canvas and I've altered that particular reference or several references I use in, in any one painting, I can use up to, to six or seven different references. That building might be from one photograph. The, the, this idea that I've got from the trees might be from another photograph, etc. But I compile this into a into a painting, and that net that becomes my property. However, saying that, um, I don't mind anybody actually doing whatever they want to do with the paintings you see on my channel. Um, it's nice to be asked, um, and, and and I'm very grateful that that people do ask me. But I'm also um, and I understand. There's a lot of people out there that don't ask and, and they go ahead and sell paintings that they've they've copied on YouTube and not not just my channel but any channel. I can't I can't speak for others. I can't speak for others, but um you know, as far as I'm aware, it would it would it was so expensive when when you when you do a painting when you do a painting, um, or take a photograph and you put it on Facebook or YouTube or things like that and and then you find out that some dealers um, use that or sold it, uh, and, and it looks very similar to yours. It's a very, very difficult thing to prove, a very, very, very expensive thing to take through um, to copyright. And if you haven't got the resources, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because you can't, you can't chase that. And 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 at the, at the end of the other day, you've got to think about: is it worth? Is it worth it? Is it worth? These are not going to be master. These are not going to be master paintings. These these are not Van Goghs or Renoirs or you know Menins or anything like that. These are paintings that uh, uh, um, sometimes, mostly, mostly I would say, uh, an amateur artist has done. And you've got to protect your rights. And I'm not saying you haven't, but at the end of the day, you've got to weigh up the fact: is it worth the risk? Is it worth? Is it worth putting? 
things like that on YouTube and Facebook and things like that. If you if you could, you know people are going to copy them. <laughs> That's as simple as that. So I would rather just say I'm happy to do and let you do what you want with them. Um, as long as you give me some sort of credit, that's fine with me. And if you don't give me any credit, how am I gonna find out? How am I gonna find out? So we're just gonna put a few scratch marks in like that. I'll put some more leaves over them in a second. I'm not going to, so yeah, that's a simple question really answered there. So um, Lynette Arnold asks, is there another method as I can, so I can erase carbon paper lines off cardboard. So if if you've traced, you can see that's drying already. Look, that's quite nice. Yeah, that's you can see the shine on that already. So if you put if you if you if you if you've got um, carbon paper lines, if you've got carbon lines, say that's a carbon line. I don't know if you can see, let's put it by there. So say we say we got a say we got a carbon line on our. that we've traced out and if you do that it smudges as well again again if you wanted to you could get a little bit of this glazing medium you could glaze over that drawing quite nicely you could glaze over that drawing that's going to fix that drawing in place or you can get what i tend to do is just get a little bit of like very thin burnt umber like this once the drawing has been done, once those carbon lines have been done, you can paint. You can paint those. You can paint those drawing lines in like this. Just go over the carbon. It'll wash off, but you will have that little line, very very thin. You use a thinner brush than this, and you can you can go around your tracing like that. There's many different ways you can do that. So um, yeah, there's just two methods that I tend to use um, to help with that one. So we, I, I think this is coming on quite nice. This this um, this painting. So I'm gonna want to I want to work on this road. I want to put a I want to put some gravel in there. I want to show that it's been raining. So I'm gonna be working on this puddle. Now you, uh, you can see I got a bit of blue there. So I put a shadow line already there to make it look deep. Just putting that little line has made that stand out again. There you can see there's a bit of a shadow line there. You can put some shadows in here, make it look wet. Put some gravel down there. Put another glaze of color over it we've got to work a little bit on this area here that is looking quite nice now i quite like that maybe a little bit lighter i don't know if you can see it on camera but i can see some shadows there i'm quite happy with that i put a few sc scrape lines in there um i'm going to build those those um trees up a little bit more um we don't want if, if you don't want it too green um we don't want it too green, do we really? We don't want it too bright, I'm trying to say. We don't want it too bright. Let's just see. I got a little bit too much paint on my... Um, let me put my phone down. I'm going to get paint all over my phone again. Let's look. Maybe a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit darker there. I'll just build that up. Just go over a couple of those little lines. Just hide them. It looks like a few like branches just caught the light basically i'm going to be working on that anyway i'm not going to spend too much time on that today and the last question today is um if i can see it last question today is um if jess all right okay this is a good one lynette arnold again uh lynette there's a few questions from you <laughs> there's a few questions from you because the video is going on for about 28 minutes now so we'll make this wrap this one up if I gesso the front of the canvas so the paint doesn't get absorbed, why do I need to spray the back of the canvas with water? So one of the one of the methods that I use um, when I'm painting is you'll you'll see that when I'm painting something, um, this is not a good example because it's not it's not a painting, but you'll see that I'll, I'll spray a bit of cam a bit of water on that to keep the paint from moving. Okay, now. Once I've gessoed that canvas, that water is really not going to um, penetrate as deeply as it should, especially if I'm painting on it, because it'll cause paint spots and, and little um, blemishes all over the paint. So in order to keep acrylic working effectively um, and drying out, one of the methods I do use is I soak the back of the canvas like this. When I'm using canvas, I soak the back of the canvas. If that canvas is if that canvas is wet, well not wet, but if it's damp, 
then the water's not going the the, the, the the water is not going to evaporate from that that's not going to get warm in any way because it's damp um it's not going to it's not going it, to it it helps prevent the paint from evaporating so not only have you got um water in your paint you've got your retarders you've got your mr bottle um, you're trying to extend the drying time of this paint as much as possible because acrylics are notoriously difficult to use. When I'm using canvas, I always make sure the back of my canvas is damp and I always make sure it stays damp while I'm working on it. Not only that, when this canvas dries out, as you can see, it gets a bit wobbly. So there we go. The other thing is when that's wet and you put the stretchers bars in again, so I'm using three different questions here. When you put these stretches bars in and you stretch that out, when this is wet, when that dries, it's going to be as tight as a drum as well. So it's effective in many ways. So I hope that's answered the question. I hope there's a few tips answered there as well. So thank you very much for joining me here today and I hope that um, uh, those questions have helped. So I'm going to crack on with this painting now. I'm going to do a little bit more work to this. And um, there's a few areas that I need to look at. Especially that area there is a bit bright. I want to look at the roof. I'm going to be doing a bit more work on these trees. And um, I'm basically going to enjoy myself and have a ball. So thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.